Well, we got the T300 behind me. Let's talk about it because this is pretty interesting and I've been brainstorming with some of the best mechanics and Bobcat technicians across the country trying to figure out what is going on with this and I'm not the first one to work on it. So what's the problem? Um, when you try to drive this machine, forward and reverse is okay, but if you try to counter steer in any direction, because this is a manual drive machine, if you try to counter steer in any direction, it really fights you. get a lot of feedback in the sticks and stuff. Um, and, and normally, you know, that all points to like charge pressure, and that's some of the first things that we started with was charge pressure issues, and we started basically went through this whole machine and just tested all the pressures, the brake line pressure, the charge pressure, uh, check case drain in the motors, check case drain in the uh, drive pump. Everything's checking out good. Um, originally, I mean, it, it had the issue for a while, so someone else had troubleshot the, um, the hydrostat, the drive pumps, which normally, yes, 99% percent of the time it usually is a high hydrostat issue um, but I guess not always so they they bought a remanufactured hydrostat unit installed it um, and it didn't really help the um, the charge pressure was a little high I think he said it was over 500 so they brought it back down to spec I think 450 or whatever and it actually made the problem worse, but it did not fix the feedback that was in the sticks. So next logical thing to do would be put drive motors in it, right? And I think that's what they did. Well, I know that's what they did. They got some reman drive motors from one of the uh, rebuilders, put two new drive motors in it, and that still didn't fix the issue. But all the pressures and everything's checking out. So, you know, what's, what's going on? I don't, I don't, I don't know. But like I said, I've been brainstorming with some of the best mechanics in the country and we all throw ideas off of each other and we just haven't come up with anything great. So I went ahead and pulled the engine, the hydrostat back out of it for a second time, tore it down again. And there's just not enough damage inside um, the hydrostat. We're gonna tear it down in a, in a different video, but right now we're just talking about what I'm doing moving forward. Um, I just didn't see enough where, I mean, there is some damage on the valve plates and stuff or some scarring, but it, it still just seems kind of weird. And, and the way that it was rebuilt kind of has me a little concerned, um, them using new parts mixed with old parts and stuff, but we'll talk about that later. So what I did is I was like, okay, let's see if we can find a new pump. Well, find a new pump, one of these, no, it's, it's almost impossible to find a new OEM pump for one of these machines. Not only that, there's no remands available. You would have to send it off, have it rebuilt and sent back to you. Well, the one that I took out of here, it looks like it's been rebuilt several times or it was a really old pump and it's just all they had is a core and they rebuilt it. So, you know I'm a genuine OEM parts type guy. I like to stick with OEM. But when there was no other option, reached out to a company called <laughs> Friday Parts. Now, hang on. Hang on, I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. I was really, I was really skeptical um, of Friday parts, but because every time I search for something for heavy equipment, something that was hard to find, they always popped up. And I did, I bought some old Zexel uh, fuel pumps from them before, and some hard to find parts that just aren't available anywhere else. And they always delivered and it was always seemed to be a quality OEM part, especially on the Zexel stuff. It, um, Zexel is, is a fuel pump, fuel pump parts manufacturer. Everything you know had their name and everything branded on it, but we already did a video how that name branding and stuff works out, but I had no reason to think, because it worked great. So I reached out to them. They claim they have a genuine Bobcat OEM, which Bobcat doesn't make it. I think this is a sour pump, sour damn bus. They said they have an original and they will ship it to me. So I went online, placed the order, and it arrived. It came FedEx, the crate looks amazing. <laughs> Coming from FedEx, a heavy part, and a crate that looks amazing, that's, yeah, that's not something you see every day. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna take a look at the pump and see if it is actually an OEM pump and see what it looks like, quality. I have not opened this, I have not even seen it yet. Let's just see what we got. So 
packaged very well. It does have the Friday parts uh, tag on the box. So there is no other tag on this crate that would make me think there's another manufacturer for it. Oh wow, this is impressive. A Friday parts Frisbee. That was nice of them. What is this, some little <laughs> cab air fresheners? That's cool. All right, wow. This is what I wanted to see. This does appear to be an original Bobcat pump. Let's get it put up on the table and we'll take a little closer look at it. Well, here it is. We can tell that it is brand new. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we do have the Sour Danfoss logo casted into it, so that definitely looks original. It does have the Bobcat tag on it with a serial number and a part number. It even says made in USA, but I know it took a while to get this, so they shipped it from China. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't made in the USA, shipped to China. This is new old stock or something. So right here on the front, it looks like I do have just a little bit of surface rust, but it's not pitted. It just looks like it's right on the surface. So we can see on our threads and our pump shaft here, there is a little bit of just surface rust. Like maybe, like I said, new old stock. This has been sitting for a while in a warehouse and they just had the stock on it. Um, Bobcat part number on each pump housing, 709-5814. Yeah, I think this is all original. So everything looks right to me. Even the cap that's on the back of the pump, as many of these as I put in from Bobcat, just, yeah, I think we got an original OEM Bobcat pump from Friday Parts. And other than a little bit of surface rust, I mean, it looks great. I am gonna pull the plugs out. We're gonna put a bore scope in here because I don't wanna split this. Uh, being a brand new pump, but I do want to inspect the inside and make sure there's no rust or anything in there before we get it installed in our machine. So yeah, another win for Friday Parts. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get this um, inspected. We're going to get it mounted to, you know, the, um, the, the, the frame there on the engine. Then we're going to get this engine put back in real quick and we're going to test it and see if this pump actually fixed our problem or not. All right, we got our engine and hydrostat pump assembly kind of just stuck in here right now. We're about to start hooking everything up. But before I went ahead and mounted that um, pump from Friday Parts, you know, as we were pulling out the valves and swapping over all the fittings and stuff, it was full of oil. So the inside of the pump, I have no worries about that. And I'm still convinced that that is an original Bobcat pump. So a couple tips, I should have filmed this, but you know, we're kind of, you know, working and we just got to get in there and get the job done. So one tip on these big engines is I like to rig it up as far back on the engine as possible. And that way our hoist, you know, we were using the crane, we can kind of get in there as far as we, as we can um, since we rig it up, you know, further on the back of the engine. Then what I like to do is run a ratchet strap over the exhaust manifold down to the hydrostat pump set. And then we can take that ratchet strap and tighten it up and that kind of pulls up you know, the pump side of the engine so we can slide it in there. Now this machine is equipped with AC. So what we did is we put the engine in about three quarters of the way and we kind of slid it over to the side so we could get the AC compressor bolted on. It just makes it easier to kind of get in there and, and work on that area. And then once we get the AC compressor bolted up, we take this ratchet strap off and we go around to the front of the machine. I kind of use the ratchet strap in a different way where we come in from the front down and kind of hook to the pump and, and pull, the, pull it the rest of the way in. Let's walk around there and take a look at that. All right, so what I did is I kind of rigged up a big pipe right here. I used a couple of big C clamps, you know, on these um, uh, lift arm stabilizer <laughs> arm bars here. And um, so you can see my ratchet strap goes down here and it just kind of goes underneath the pump there. There's a little spot where we can kind of hook it. And what that does is that just lifts up you know, this side of the pumps and pulls it in at the same time. And then we can get it right on our mounts. And now we can get our mounts bolted in. But you can see why I'm not filming all of this because that's just too much going on inside here. 
really to, to film. So what we're gonna do is once I get everything hooked up, I'm gonna show you how I prime the pump before we start it. It's important to prime this hydrostatic pump because we you know we don't wanna start it dry and cause damage to a brand new pump. You know, our uh, hydraulic tank is over here on the side. So it's not quite, like once we fill it up, yeah, technically the pump is lower or about the same height is what the oil level will be, but we're still gonna fill this pump up with hydraulic oil before we start it. So we're gonna start getting lines and everything hooked up and we'll come back to that priming process. All right, so now that we got the pumps installed in the machine and everything hooked up, what I did is I went ahead and filled the hydraulic tank, you know, up just higher than level. I went over the bubble about on two or three quarts. And what that does is that kind of makes sure that the level in the tank is at least the level, you know, halfway up the pumps here. So I was gonna try to prime it from the top and I don't usually do that, but I just wanna make sure on new pumps that it did have oil in it. And like I said, this had plenty of oil in it from the factory. So I know it's lubricated, but I still wanna make sure that the case is flooded. So what we did is we took the case drain um, line off right here. This one just comes from our fan motor. And when we did, it bled some air out and then it just started spewing oil out of it so that we know that both halves of the pump now is flooded in, in oil. Another thing we'll notice is that, you know, we're about to start hooking up the drive linkage and I don't have the upper steering plate on and that's what centers, you can call it a centering plate, steering plate, whatever you want to call it, but that's what centers our pump. But first, what we need to do is we got to hook up our steering linkage and you know the, these holes here are slotted so a lot of people think that maybe that's just a neutral adjustment that's try to how they set their speed or their neutral but the proper way to set this is you can see that i can move the swash plate in the pump without the centering plate on it so what i want to do is i want to come until maximum stroke of that swash plate see it stops right there and then what we do is we take our drive handle up here and we move our drive handle to maximum stroke where it stops. And there is an adjustment up here that you can set that stop in this hole. Now, not all models have that, but this one does. And, and we can kind of fine tune it, you know, after we get all this hooked up. So I've got the handle in full stroke and I've got the pump in full stroke. Now we can see this yellow mark from the original repair someone made. That would have put my drive handle further back so now the operator could push against the handle, see that? And it would push harder against the full stroke of the pump, which can damage our pedal shaft or even the pump itself. And it can wear out bushings. It can cause all kinds of issues. So we want to just make sure that we got maximum stroke out of our handle and maximum stroke out of our pump. And we could even back that up an eighth of an inch or so just to be on the safe side. And then we will bolt that up. And we're going to do that on both sides. And once we get that set, once we get the machine out and we start driving it, we will um, see if one side is faster than the other. And at that point, what we'll do is we'll, let, let's just say that this was the fast side. We will back it down some and, try, and tighten it down. Because what we want to do is we want to slow down the fast side. We don't want to speed up the slow spot side because in that way we'll try to overstroke our pump. So hopefully that makes sense. But anyways, we're going to finish putting this back together, get the machine started up and test our theory. I'm a little nervous that <laughs> we might still have some issues, but I think, um, I really think this is going to take care of it. So I'm all finished putting the machine back together. I mean, I got a few panels and stuff to put back on, but we got the pump and the engine, everything back in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in here and we're going to test that pump, test that steering. We're going to look at the charge pressure and make sure everything's working correctly. So we'll get the machine started. here in this bottom corner is our charge pressure and we're at idle right now so 1100 let me see if that's all the way down yeah it feels about right 1200 rpm and see where our charge pressure is it's way above low i mean about halfway to high is where we actually want that charge pressure but we don't want a lot of fluctuation. Like if it, at idle, we wouldn't want this to be real low and then accelerate and it come way up. That's the sign of an inefficient hydraulic system. So let's rev this one up. So we came 
up a bar or two. We're at 2,500 RPM. Let's bring it back down to idle. Yeah, so about two bars. So that's about average. That, that's what we want to see. So we've got a good, solid hydro, hyd hydrostatic system and hydraulic system both. So we got good charge pressure. Now let's check the steering. So our problem was, like I said, we could drive forward as, as we are now, no problem. And we could drive reverse, no problem. But if we were driving forward and we tried to counter steer, the sticks would really push hard against each other and it was really hard to steer. And see, now I have like no, um, no resistance in the sticks at all now when I'm turning. Bring that idle on up, like in, um, so this would be uh, how we would operate the machine at high idle. And we're on asphalt with these big wide tracks, so that's even harder for it to turn. And I can turn with just a couple fingers. See, I can push and pull on the sticks. Even in reverse, we'll check it. Same thing, just a couple fingers. So now this T300, I mean, it runs like a brand new machine. That's exactly how it's supposed to operate. No resistance in those sticks. I mean, it feels really good. So the Reman Hydra, it's just, it's odd that how it happened, you know? Uh, we had drive issues, they replaced the pump and it didn't really help. So the Reman pump, which we're gonna tear down in the very next video, um, well, I've got two pump tear down videos, but we will be more specific on this one. We're gonna look at how it was rebuilt we're not going to mention who rebuilt it because it is a reputable company, so I'm surprised that they did what they did inside this pump. But the new, brand new Bobcat pump from Friday Parts. So thanks again, Friday Parts, for supporting us and helping us out with this video. Uh, they did not give us the pump, but they did help, um, you know, with the video and getting that pump to us. And so, so check out Friday Parts, you know, for them, those hard to find parts. You know, I was a little skeptical. Like I said, I was getting an original, brand new Bobcat pump, but sure enough everything looks legit to me and i've had luck with friday parts on other purchases so yeah now we're just going to finish getting this thing cleaned up put back together and it'll be ready to go thanks for watching